Hey, my name is Ivy Starnes. I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas, coming to you live today from Winslow, Illinois. Today we're talking about what to do when you ride a bolting horse, a horse that runs away with you. Now, this is not going to be the situation for every horse and every rider. This is a situation that I happen to get on video. It happens to be one of the only times I've ridden a horse that decided to bolt. So that's just what it is. There are a few principles we can take away from it, as well as some of the things that I did after that we're going to talk about that you can do to help prevent this from happening again, even if we can't totally prevent it. Now, this horse had a history of bolting, and during my rides, this is probably something like the 20th or 30th ride, probably 20th, and up till this point had exhibited no bolting behavior. Behavior. He had always been calm and more laid back than goey. So I was riding this horse in a snaffle and I had ridden on windier days. This was a very calm day. This is about 20 minutes into the ride. And so we've already gone down the road and back with zero incidents. I'm not gonna show you that whole boring video, but I'm going to show you what did happen and then we're gonna talk about it. This video is only about 50 minutes long. I'm gonna play it in its entirety just understand that up until this point, there had been no bad behavior, no bolting, no spooking. In any of the rides previously, uh, he was a little scared of cows, but no bolting behavior then, and certainly nothing spooky happening this day. So this is a case where there is a slight spook at the beginning and then a bolt. And you can't, unfortunately, you can't quite see my hands to see like what's going on. Um, <clears throat> let me check one thing really quickly. Uh, uh, yeah, there really, there's nothing else to see. I wish you could have seen my hands in this, but I was asking him to slow down. Um, but he wasn't slowing down. So let's go ahead and take a look at this horse. Go off gating kind of fast. Um, you can slow down because you're always going to get something yummy. So they're much happier to slow down for you and stop when they know I there's a reward him. coming. And people might be like, oh, it's just doing it for the food. I'm like, who cares? If the horse stops when you want them to and they go when you ask, isn't that a good thing? Isn't that a safe thing? Good job. And again, as he gets better, you notice I'm stopping fewer times. We're gating farther. And that's the goal. Now we're going to walk. <laughs> Good, good, yep, okay, so, yep, get on the safe, okay, easy, the top of the hill easy. is a road. Good job. Yep. And that's what we don't want. But what you saw was a safe way to ride. Okay, so we watched him bolt there. There was a very slight spook at the beginning from a very calm horse, ridden multiple times, and there were no other horses nearby, and he took off running. Um, to me, it felt like he just didn't want to slow down. We started out on the road, which in itself was kind of a dangerous situation for a bolt. Uh, and then I, on purpose, transitioned to the grass and we were heading uphill, which is again, to our benefit. But uh, at the top of the hill was a road that's very busy. And I knew we had to slow down before the top of the hill, but that we had some time to ride it out, which is someone had the question of how do you ride out a bolt? Well. This is a really good example of sometimes what can happen on the trail because there was no option to do a one rein stop. Do you know why? Now, probably most of you know why. If I had done a one rein stop in this particular case, most likely he would have fallen down because even if he did do a one rein stop, which I did not try, if he would have turned sharply uh, on the road or even in the grass area, we either would have run into the fence or if I tried turning him sharply on the road, he most likely would have fallen down. If I could have shut down the one rain, if I could have shut down the spook at the beginning with a one rain stop, possibly, but again, I would not turn a horse fast pretty much ever on a road. Even though this horse wasn't shod, it's still slippery enough 
you must be aware of your settings. Now, if you're in a big grassy field, turning in a circle is probably your best option. But if you are on a road or a narrow trail where turning is not a good option, this, is, this way to ride is probably your best bet. Now, I am pulling. This is what you can't see from the video is that I am pulling on the horse and he wasn't slowing down. And I can pull hard. He definitely felt like he just was gonna keep going. Now this horse is very light and soft. I'm riding him in a snaffle. This is my 20th ride and this is what happened. Let's watch it again. I'm gonna talk through it now that you've Go heard the audio. Kind of so I have this horse and he is calmly eating grass. The whole ride had been calm and we then continue walking on. He was happy to walk. We've been working on some faster gating. Uh, and then we get this tiny spook, which he barely, he just took a couple quick steps. No big deal in most of the world here. Uh, and then he just took off running. And we, yes, we were headed in the direction of home, right there, a little spook. And I shortened my reins to pull. And then he was like, nope, I'm gone. And so then he's just running. And you can see we go past a creek here, which is why I didn't go in the grass sooner. And then immediately I could. Now with the wide angle, what you can't see is how steep that ditch is that I just went through. He could have easily jumped it or tripped because it's a lot steeper than it looks. This is also faster than it looks. And we went a lot farther than it looks. We went about halfway up this hill before he finally slowed down. And that was with me pulling really hard. Uh, so <laughs> those are all things that from a GoPro video are very difficult to tell. We went past a creek, which is why I couldn't go down into the grass sooner, or I would have, because I do not like the idea of a horse bolting on the road. And I definitely cannot turn the horse while he is bolting if we are on unsure footing. This includes muddy footing. This includes wet grass, dry grass, possibly gravel. This is why a one rain stop will not fix everything the horse gives you. But what I did is I rode up and forward. Now you can sit back stay with the horse. I was fortunate. He did not spook sideways or buck. So I still had my stirrups. I was still balanced at the time it happened. And I basically went along for the ride with my reins gathered up pulling, but also maintaining control of the turning. It's very important to remember I did not do a one rein stop because that would have been very, very dangerous for me and for the horse. And so what I did was I, I rode through it and I started pulling and asking him to slow down. You can also, if you go back and listen to the audio, you can also hear me taking a couple of breaths. Once we got on the grass, I needed to calm myself down. So I took a couple of deep breaths to make sure that I wasn't adding to this horse's trauma and stress. And this probably helped. It helped me. It helped you as a rider. There are times where your horse spooks and you have time to ride it. You still have balance. You don't have a road or a cliff coming up or something really scary, ride with it, pull, stay calm, stop the horse when you can. Yes, it sounds easy to talk about, um, but as riders, as people who regularly ride animals that do unpredictable things that can kill us, we have to practice being calm in situations like this. And that's what happened. Does anybody want this situation to happen? No, not at all. We don't wish that this happened. But what I did, I, I have the benefit of showing you guys, and now I'm gonna go through some of the things that I did afterwards that helped this horse be better. One, I first switched from the snaffle to the McGregor releasing bit. And I realized that I'd never asked this horse to canter and that I didn't know if he knew how to stop from a canter. Now, you may see this is Ivy, that's so basic, but so many people don't canter their gated horses. So you know what they don't know? they don't know if their horse has ever been trained to stop from a canter. Now, just because your horse knows to stop from a walk or a gate or a trot or a fast gate doesn't mean they've ever been trained to stop from the canter. And that is indeed what I found with this horse. So I took the horse into a pasture. Now I have grass footing, good footing, and started riding him with the shanked bit. I'd make him canter and, and then I'd ask him to stop. And at the beginning, he'd throw his head up, he would fight it, and he didn't want to stop. But I just would ask, and as soon as he stopped, I would praise him. But if he stopped and he fought me, I'd back up a few steps and I'd canter again. <laughs> and his canter was awful at the beginning. We'd canter again and I'd stop. And as soon as he had a very soft, nice stop, we'd stop, I'd let him rest, we'd let him eat. And I did this for about four days and he finally started to have a good canter and he started to have a really nice stop and then I switched to a snaffle. And then I needed him to stop when I put contact on the snaffle. And then the next thing that we had to do was I needed to 
not only of contact on the snaffle, but I needed him to stop without any rain contact. So I needed him to stop off of my woe. And I actually have videos of all of this and maybe I will go ahead and put these together and upload them to the private training group because I do have this footage of this training that I did with this horse post <clears throat> the bolting. I don't know why this horse bolted. There is a slight spook, but we had had spooks before just like this that did not result in bolting. Some horses bolt because they're panicked. You've all heard the stories of like ground bees or something really major happened. A bear came out and the horses were genuinely panicked. This horse did not seem panicked to me. He seemed to want to run and didn't want to stop rather than a horse that lost its mind. But still what I did was good is I tried to get him back. And then the training I did was to teach him to stop. So if any of you are riding your horses and you've never cantered them and you don't know if they'll stop, it would be a good idea that if you're not comfortable doing the canter, find someone who is and just ask him to canter the horse a little and make sure the horse stops. And if he does, you're good. You don't have to keep cantering. You just want to make sure that they know it. This horse did not know it. And so I wanted to show that this isn't anything I'm proud of or disappointed in. I wish I could have figured out what made this horse bolt because I sent him the owner the horse home with this shanked bit. I said, don't ride him in a snaffle because when he bolts, you don't have enough control to stop. She said he still bolted, but she was able to stop him faster, which is a really good thing. There are horses out there that are probably, you know, what you call like chronic bolters. And I don't know how to fix that yet. I do know having a solid stop is amazing. And if you haven't actually trained for it, that's something you do want to train. All right. April says, my spotted saddle horse mare is like this. She puts her head up, grabs the bit, and just goes. No brakes on her uh, when she does that. This horse didn't grab the bit. I don't know where that term came from. I don't particularly care. The horse didn't grab the bit. He just ignored it. Okay? Uh, Deb says, when my horse bolts, he spins. Hard to sit, and half the time, he sometimes falls. Should I widen my reins to prevent a spin? It's hard to know when he's going to spin. Yeah, that's really tricky, Deb. When you do have a horse that spins, you need to do is actually, if you're gonna keep this horse, is you wanna have a really good seat, all right? And that may mean you go get lessons on a, a school horse and do more turning because you wanna be able to ride. How to prevent the spin when you don't know it's coming, it's very difficult. I mean, I, I, difficult. Uh, I'm not gonna you know, mess with you and say, oh no, you know, it's easy, you, know, you just have to do this. I don't personally know how you prevent a spin when you don't know it's coming. Now, I assume we're not talking about a horse that wants to go home and you know it's coming and you just have to be ready. Sometimes they move so stinking fast that you cannot be ready. All you can do is have a really good seat so that you're with them when they spin. And also, most spins don't come out of nowhere. I know they can, so don't jump on me. If you haven't watched my series on fear in horses, you should watch that because sometimes the horses are telling you they're nervous. Their heads are up. Now, granted, like this horse, everything was calm before it happened. That can happen. But generally, there are signs. So the trick is, what have you conditioned your horse? What I would like to do with horses that I train is condition them that even if they get scared, come to me because I'll give you a treat. <laughs> because I'd rather have that happen than a horse bolt. Uh, Amy says, so funny how many horses are scared of cows. Yeah, well, he was a lot less scared of cows after I finished riding him by them, and that was good. Shannon says, I have a Frisian that would panic around traffic and grab the bit. If I could knock his shoulder in, he would give up his bit and relax again. So you can move the shoulder over, but obviously you had a trigger that you knew, which was traffic. And so you can definitely work to help a horse to habituate or classically condition them to like traffic versus a horse that very out of nowhere spooks. Although I know that in this case, the horse I was riding, with his owner, he tended to spook when he was with another horse that was high energy and spooky. Sherry says, what I find more amusing are how many horses are scared of Icelandics, Icelandic horses. I've got a couple of friends with Icy's and seeing horses, relax seeing horses reactions that I've never seen in Icelandic is hilarious. I've not seen that before. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Amy says, she's replying to Sherry. She said her son had an Icelandic for a while and the other horses thought she was strange. If we passed others, they would spook a bit. I've never seen that happen, but I totally believe you. Megan says, I heard you say that doing a one rein stop in this situation would be dangerous. Which type of bolting situation is this more dangerous in? <clears throat> My Tennessee walking horse bolted a few months ago 
when my friend got thrown off her horse and I had to do a one rein stop because she was injured and I needed to turn around. So a one rein stop is okay if your horse is not genuinely bolting, which means not genuinely going really fast, or you have room. So if you have room to turn your horse and you're not on slippery ground, like mud, road, dry grass, you can totally do a one rein stop, especially if your horse is trained to it. You can't do a one rein stop unless your horse is trained. And if your horse is trained, then it's fine. You would not do it on the road because you're asking to pull your horse over because the horse is going so fast and the ground is so slippery and so hard. <clears throat> Shannon says, I don't know about her, but when I do a one rein stop, if I do a one rein stop and ask for the spin, but I practice this when I'm riding, so I ask them to go into a spin, and then if it's slow, I work on the speed and then coming back to slow. And Deb responds that and says he falls when he spins. So, okay, one rein stops are a little bit of a different topic. Not that you shouldn't do them, but you should not do them if you don't have room or you're on something slippery. Second, you need to practice one rein stops at home, which um, Shannon says she does. Deb says he falls when he spins. So it sounds like you need to work on balancing and maybe actually practicing. I'm not going to call it a spin. I'm going to call it a turn on the haunches. So it sounds like you need to practice teaching your horse to move around the hind end slowly at home so he might get more balance um, because it's not good that he falls. We wouldn't want that. Uh, back down here. Amy says, I think some horses just don't recognize Icy's as horses yet. Their approval is still pending. Okay. Megan says, ah, okay, that makes sense. We were in the woods and he was so intent on chasing the other horse and in a panic. And sometimes you have room and the footing is good to do a one rein stop. And that's totally fine. But what I'm saying is people asked about riding it safely. You could do a one rein stop if you have room. Also, if you try one rein stop and it doesn't work, what are you going to do? Jump off? Well, Jumping off could be the right answer in situations, uh, but you need to know that you can get your feet free. You need to know that you're not going to kill yourself and you need to do it only if there's an unsafe situation coming up. Yes, your friend was injured and I'm glad the one rain stop worked, but the last thing you want to do is get injured as well. So know your horse, practice the one rain stop at home, practice stopping from a canter and a gallop. If you are not doing those things, you are not prepped for your horse to bolt. And people might be like, but Ivy, I don't want to canter. Then, pre then pay someone to do a couple rides on your horse who is. Yes, that sounds harsh, but I don't want anybody to get hurt. And it's very easy to get hurt if you're on horses that have never practiced stopping from the canter. All right, just for kicks and giggles, let's watch it one more time with the audio. Fast. Um, you can slow down because you're always going to get something yummy. So they're much happier to slow down for you and stop when they know there's a reward coming. And people might be like, oh, we're just doing it for the food. I'm like, who cares? If the horse stops when you want them to and they go when you ask, isn't that a good thing? Isn't that a safe thing? Good job. And again, as he gets better, you notice I'm stopping fewer times. We're gating farther. And that's the goal. Now we're going to walk. <laughs> good. Good. Yep, okay. So, yep. Get on the safe. Okay, easy. 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 Yep. Good. Good. Good job. And that's what we don't want. But what you saw was a safe way to ride. Again, in this situation, there was a road, there was a creek coming up. I knew that turning the horse into the grass earlier would have been a mistake and doing a one rain stop on the road could be quite dangerous. Let's see. Sherry says, what would you suggest I do on a bolting horse going downhill? I've been in that situation on the trail and a one rain stop just wasn't safe. That's true. I would say that downhill, if your horse is actually bolting, a one rein stop is again dangerous because if the horse goes down, you'll most likely be underneath them. In which case, ride it out, pull hard, say whoa, and think to yourself, you should have practiced stopping from a gallop at home. No, I'm kidding. Ride it out. Don't do a one rein stop. Pull hard. Pull as hard as you can. Sit back. Um, talk to the people around you to know that this, they know your horse is bolting. 
Uh, and Shannon says, practice, practice, practice. Yes. And I'm going to try to do a follow-up video on the private training group that shows the subsequent, the videos after this, where I trained this horse to have a really good stop from a canter. He had it, and I show it in the video, it's an amazing stop at the walk and the gate. Perfectly stop off of your seat and your voice, but at the canter, he completely ignored you. And I went back and retrained that to make this horse safer. Hopefully that all makes sense and hopefully it will give you a, a little bit of an idea. There's times when it's not safe to do a one rein stop. When the footing isn't good, when you're going downhill or when you don't have room next to you to do it. If you have room, go for it. But if it doesn't work, try to ride it out. All right. Thank you guys so much for all your comments and for watching and joining me again as I do live videos. I love to hear any other tips you guys have as well as if you, what other videos you want. Um, thanks for joining me for these three impromptu live videos today. You got this.